Okay, friends, we're back on Cordova Hill here for the second team coming up on day one of 2023. You can hear the radio, 5.90 a.m. in the background. Just had a fan ask uh, why there are only 17 teams in the race. It takes an elite team of dogs to make it anywhere near this track. This is one of the hardest sled dog races in the world. And here you go. Look at this team coming up, folks. Is that Andy then? All right, that is Andy from Nanana here. He did number one. Andy looking good. Smile on his face, pushing away. Nice job, Andy. Okay, right on, guys. We, we just had Andy come up here, and he looked real good. He was, you know, he has streeper lines. This is his second time or third time running this, but he looked like a pro. He had a good smile on his face and was moving. All right, folks, we are looking for the next bib coming down. Okay, this is what happens. We have gaps between our mushers. So if you're watching on the replay, go ahead and slide forward until you see the next team come up. If you're with us live here, then you're just like all the other mushers here. And fans and folks waiting and watching. Here comes a dog team. You can hear the volunteers at the top of the hill. There you can see way down there's a dog team. This is when everybody wonders who it is. We're thinking it might be Greg Taylor, bib number four. Here we go. Is it three? Okay, Gary Markley from Salcha here, friends. Let's get nice and low and get this dog team. Gary Markley. He's run this race several times. Great job. Come on, Taylor. Hey, right on, friends. I'll tell you what, Gary had another smile on his face. We're seeing some really happy mushers on this hill. These dogs are looking good. Here are the fans here, folks, while we wait for the next dog team coming in. This is what your road crew volunteer looks like. This is how much work is done between each and every team so that the traffic can keep moving here in the municipality of Anchorage. You have your law enforcement partners helping out, taking time out of their happy Friday where they could be enjoying their families and helping us here. There's 50 plus volunteers helping on the road. And this is a popular hill. I mean, those of us who live here, we drive here all the time. 15th and Cordova is part of the city here. So it's a big effort. And then they carry on all the way down right here to the corner of 4th. So this is the second part of the home stretch, the, or, you know, the first part of the second half here, because they run down here and they turn the corner, then they have the actual home stretch. So it's almost like having two home stretches. And we got car coming. So this is what it looks like. They got to coordinate everybody coming through. So if you've never been to Anchorage for the rendezvous, it takes a whole community to get these dogs this trail. The snow is brought in, trucked in, moved all around. Streets are closed. Coordination with race officials, groomers, trail sweeps, trail markers, everything. It really does take a huge community here. 
to get. Here's one of my favorite fans, comes every year to the spot, right? Right. <laughs> this is the best place in Alaska to watch the race, isn't it? Good good for Alaskans here. Exactly. Good old Alaskans. Exactly. Boom. So we got the little hill club. We have folks who wonder what it's like to be a sled dog on this hill. They have to choose to keep running. They got to choose to keep running. Here it comes. Here it comes. should be Taylor. If a dog team thinks this is the finish, that always gets tough. Thanks for joining us, everybody from around the world. We got another team coming in right now if you're just joining us. You can go online for the radio. If you're having trouble receiving it, I believe you can catch it digitally online at their dot com, khar.com or khar.whatever. So go check that out. Let's see who this is going to be here. Bib number four, Greg Taylor. We have a we have a super fan right here with binoculars. There he is. Got it. Oh, he's got a nice telephoto camera there, helping us out. Takes the whole community here. Greg Taylor from Fairbanks. I hope his brother's watching right now and his wife. Here's all your hard work with your brother, brother Greg. All right, Greg Taylor looking good up and over on day one. Nice clean run for him. Hey, thanks so much, uh, Mike. We uh, just zoomed in on Greg's team looking real good. And uh, Greg, again, focused, good clean day one. That was a great run by Greg. Talked to him before the race and the interview. and. He said, of course, every year's goal is to win. The only way to win the Ronda is to have clean Cordova runs. You can be way ahead, uh, but if your team here gets confused, thinks it's the finish or what have you, uh, you still have to get the fourth and D to finish this race. There's Kim, uh, one of our great volunteer leads out here. She has a volunteer group that she directs every year. She's like, I would say like the Cordova manager. You can see the radio for Asra there. She's a musher herself. And again, super, super fun. Do we have another team coming? Nope. But we got everybody anticipating. All right, now we got a little bit of, a little bit of space here. So let's go ahead and thank our sponsors. I'll go ahead and put out, put out the sponsor sheet here. You're looking down the trail like everybody else, and there's the group that made. The 2023 Open World Championship possible. We especially want to thank North Slope Telecom for all the radio support. Big part of this race is communicating between all the different checkpoints out there. Okay. All righty. We were just thanking all the sponsors out here, uh, Mike. We were just letting everybody know that uh, North Slope Telecom really helped us out with all these radios. It's how we all live. Radio call to radio call, so we're grateful. All right, very good. Okay, so again, we're waiting on our, we'll go ahead and plug Rasmussen, AAA Fence, Atwood, Alaska Design Dentistry, thank you. The veterinarian team at Pet Emergency uh, Treatment Incorporated and Raven Veterinary representing out here on the trail, checking on the dogs. Linden, we appreciate them always. Tudor Bingo, of course, and Alaska Hydrax, Coca-Cola Alaska, Steve Cole, and then the Alaska Dog Center, where I work out of, for letting me come down here from Willow. So Kelly's just getting on. About six teams have come up the hill so far. You want to jump online to the Rondi page and see as they fill out the worksheet. You can see some of the super fans here did their homework. And they printed out their start lists and have their booklets ready and their telephoto lenses. And actually, we rely on our uh, super fans because it's hard to keep track of everything here. We're all in the same boat. 
But we've seen some dominant runs already. That was pretty cool. Again, there's the street crossing crew keeping everything. They're poised and ready. As soon as a team comes, they go ahead and shut this road down. So that's pretty impressive. There's your imprint that in your mind, 15th and Cordova, otherwise known as Heartbreak Hill, where this race is usually won or lost. There we go. Waiting on that next team to come up. We just had Greg Taylor, bib number four, come by. We're likely going to have, well, Dave Turner probably got passed a few times. So either we're looking for Tony Blanford, Marvin Cochran, or Michael Tetzner. Dave Turner's running more of an Alaska Husky mid-distance team, a little bit slower team. So you're not going to expect him to be passing anybody on day one. Tony Blanford's running a streeper team, so he could have all sorts of speed, depending on how the dogs are doing. And then Michael Tessner from Germany has wanted to be in the first place position for many, many years. And so let's see what kind of pacing he can keep up here. We've already had Blaine Streeper, Buddy Streeper come up the hill first. Then bib number one, Andy Hewton. And then bib number three, Gary Markley. Bib number four, Greg Taylor. So we're waiting on the next team to come up. Clearly a little bit of separation going on right now. And so teams have already crossed the finish line. Thanks for asking Carol Ann Miller. Yep, Carol pointed out that uh, if you're listening to 590 AM, you'll get the kind of the 360 view here. And again, zooming out a little bit. This is how people in Alaska gather. They stand up and down the sidewalks here both sides of the street and then we have our law enforcement partners helping out in the city of Anchorage with all their support snow moving Okay, I think Eddie's giving a little commentary here, so let's see what Eddie's saying. And so we got uh, Marvin and Tony and Michael Tessner uh, coming in. And so Tony will probably be, Tony Blanford, I'll bet, will be our next team in. But we don't know that for sure until we can see that. But I'm expecting Tony to be the next team. And then Tessner and Marvin and then on down through the group. Haberman, Wendy Callis. So okay, on. there's a team off in the distance. You just heard Eddie, Eddie Streeper uh, on 5.90 a.m. again. Okay. Let's go ahead and zoom down. Okay, this is Tony Blanford, folks. Bib number seven. This is a streeper team. So Tony has passed. Dave and Marvin. Look at Tony kicking, kicking. He's looking great. Another team coming. Another team coming. Okay, there you go. That looks like Marvin. Tony Bland for bib number seven, past Marvin Cochran. Bib number six, he's right here. Well, that's bib number eight, sorry, this is Michael Tetzner. Tetzner from Germany, looking great. Look at Tetzner there, he made a nice pass. Hey, that was super exciting. We had Tony looking real focused and good, and then we thought it might be Gary, but it's actually uh, Tetzner looking real strong. 
Yeah, Michael went uh, south early to run that 70 race in Wyoming, hoping it was going to help him have a better Thursday. He looks like he's having a little bit of Thursday, too. So we'll see what happens in the future. He's still got plenty of it across the street. He's going to be there, but he's going to be there. 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 That was exciting. And then where's Gary? No, sorry, where's uh, Marvin and Turner? Sorry, I screwed that up. I screwed up. Yeah. I don't know which one is that. Yeah, it's a bit of a low. Okay, we got a little bit of a low here. Let's listen to the radio. Yeah, pretty good. Bump of teams come in rather close to each other. Alex at Goose Lake was 82.40. We're waiting for her time at 15th in Cordova. As these times pop, pop up on the screen in front of me, we try to say what we can see on here. So if you didn't get a chance to make it down here to 4th and D today, uh, tomorrow, plan on it. Get down here, I'd say probably roll in about 11 o'clock. Wouldn't you, uh, you get yourself a bratwurst? Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, get a good seat on the bleacher. And they can walk along and, and talk to the musters a little bit and look at the dogs and stuff before the race oh, and yeah. get themselves seated on the bleachers if they want. For okay, the here comes start. the dog team, guys. Six. Number six, that's going to be Marvin Cochran here. Veteran musher, been racing this race since 1975. Marvin Cochran from Fairbanks, fan favorite. Sometimes the leaders slow it down, sometimes they pull it together. Okay, they're going to try to get them out of any kind of tangle. You got them moving up the hill. There you go. Let him go, let him go, let him go. There you go. Okay, they're working on getting the dog moving. Okay, there they go. Now they're setting back up. Okay, here comes Michael Tepner. He's got all his dogs on the line. They're all galloping. They look good. Uh, got the line green harnesses, and Michael's over. He's done. He'll be happy with that. Okay, great. Another finish there, if you're listening. Go ahead, Deanna. Looking like the finish line, the dog started to slow down and tried to go over the side off the trail. So he needed a little more help, and then he got stopped just before 15th in Cordova. Then he is back to track and ready to All right, very good. And Michelle, what do you have at Goose Lake for us? Okay, another team coming. Turner or Frank? Haberman. 
All right, we're trying to guess who it is, folks. I'm sure you are, too, at home. Our super fan here has his telephoto lens. He's looking for a bib number right in front of me here. I'll zoom out so you can see him there. Okay, good looking team. Wendy Callis, could be Wendy Callis here out of Fairbanks. Could be bib number 10. That'd be nice for Wendy moving up. Bib number 10, Wendy Callis running out of Fairbanks, Alaska. Great job, Wendy. Awesome job. Okay, well that was pretty exciting because we, that was pretty exciting, Mike. We just had Wendy look real good there coming up and it's always fun on the online feed. You can see like Mari Horado and other mushers wishing the mushers good luck. So that's part of the sled dog community here in Alaska. It kind of changes itself. Yeah, I watch it. Okay, friends, here's the uh, start list. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this for a second. So we're missing bib number five, Dave Turner. He should be coming in here soon. Um, Frank Haberman, bib number nine, should be coming in. But you can just see bib number 10, Wendy. She really had a great run there. She has passed several of the guys. And then we have uh, Nikki Sayo, Alex Crittenden, Don Cousins, Hans Gotts, Mandy Johnson, Michael Jake, uh, Mitchell Michael Jacobson, and Hugh Neff yet to come up the hill. So we're only about halfway through the Cordova Hill lineup here, folks. If you're just joining us, plenty more race action to be had. Let's go ahead and get that radio out. Yeah, yeah. And that's racing for you. One day at a time, three-day race. So well, we'll see what happens. And only one dog in the, in the basket. So far, just one dog in the bag. And uh, usually no dogs get put in the first day, but you never know what happens or what the reason was for that dog to get put in the bag. Brought back safely, tucked inside the bag where, where they're not getting injured. Dog team, I can see a dog team on the street. Down their ways, and they're working their way this way. Uh, might be Marvin Sunshine, if you do. Well, while we wait to see who it is, Deanna, do you have dogs on the hill? It must have been the last team that was coming down. Okay, I'm thinking that's Marvin, because he wears that white jacket all the time. But I'm not, not convinced yet, because I can't see the number, but... Coming in, Marvin's raced this race like at least 25 times. It's, oh, and pardon me, it's his 30th time. He's pedaling now. They look good. Um, okay, dog team coming around the corner, friends. Just a little bit. Now, I see a hole in the middle of his team. He might have a dog. Okay, the dogs are slowing down, bunching up a little bit, which is okay. So push them across the line. <clears throat> he's got a single, Two dog teams. So I'm thinking he's got one in the Two band. teams coming. With back team. to back. His this will be exciting. Going to and get in position here. Radio station 590 AM, folks. 590. 590 AM. Kahar. Two teams here, friends. Look at this. This is going to be exciting race action right here. You can hear the volunteers getting all ready. Two dog teams on Cordova. Bibs number 9 and 11 here. Right on. That's going to be Frank Haberman. And then Al, uh, then uh, Nikki Sayo. So Frank Haberman and Nikki Sayo here. Frank Haberman, bid number nine from Clam Gulch and Germany and Australia. Right here. Nikki Sayo looking good. There you go, dogs. It's okay. Yeah, Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. Look at that energy from Nikki Sayo there coming over the road. How cool is that? Clear the road! 
Nikki on his runners there. Chase and Frank as they head down Cordova Street to get to fourth. Fourth is the home stretch. Top of the hill is the, you know, the pre-home stretch. So it's nice long running from here. There they are. Pretty cool, trying to give you all the footage we can, and then there's a the traffic crossing. Great job, volunteers. All right, we're coming around here. Team coming right back into position. Is that Alex Crittenden? That's Alex then. Hopefully. Yep, Alex Crittenden from Bondurant, Wyoming here. Got a lot of fans from around the world. Her husband Sam's watching. Here they are, back on the hill. Look at Alex on one runner there, trying to get that sled on, waiting for those dogs. Okay, we got a team coming. Okay, boy, this has been an exciting few minutes here, friends. Bib number 13, Don Cousins, the legend. So great to have Don here. Firefighter, community leader, musher, husband, friend, Don Cousins. Otherwise known as Cousin Don. Great job, Don. All right. Don Cousins, friends. We got another team coming. This has been a great few minutes racing here. Wow. Don. Okay. Another team coming. Let's see if this is finally Dave Turner. He's missing, right? Let's go ahead and get the. Uh, oh, you got the bib number 14? Hans Gotts here, the legend from Whitehorse. He was injured seriously in December. In the hospital, he was grooming and got struck by a tree in his chest and it damaged some of his organs. Being fit and tough, he was able to make a quick recovery and about four weeks ago decided to enter. Thanks to his wife, Susan. Hans Gotts made the podium last year, third place. Looking great. What a great moment for Hans. There. there he is, and there's all the... This is Dave. Okay, Dave Turner coming. Dave Turner, baby number five, coming up the hill, racing chaos, Fairbanks, Alaska. Right now, 
Looking good, Dave. Looking good, brother. Nice work by Dave. That's a strong performance for having lost so many positions today. That means a good, good uh, prognostic for tomorrow. Eh? That's a strong dog team. Just probably had a little bit of slow run, maybe some tangles. On day one, he lost uh, about 10 bid positions. But Dave's here to uh, take the three-day race, not a one-day race for him. Can't be when you have Alaskan Huskies. Got to find your rhythm with those dogs. They're never going to be as fast as those streeper hounds. There goes Dave Turner. Okay, let's get back to the radio here. Okay, you're just getting the finish line commentary from 5:90 a.m. there, and we're here, in Cordova. We got a few more teams. For this race today, it's only day one of three days, and tomorrow we'll do it all again. So we invite you to come on down to the avenue. I'd say get here by at least 11 o'clock so you can get a good seat. Of course, there's Goose Lake, there's 15th in Cordova, there's Ambassador Avenue out on Tudor Road. Plenty of places to see this amazing open world championship race. No other course like this in the entire world. You can see a dog team on the street, block and a half away. They're pedaling, whoever it is. Riding on the right leg, pedaling with the left. And by the pedaling or pumping or pushing, what you're trying to do is just take your weight off the sled by helping push the sled forward a little bit, just to help keep the dog keep the momentum going. Because you want them to stay galloping if you can right in across the finish line because by the third day every second could be a, a position change. That looks like hands gap, I think. Okay, this is Hans Gap from Whitehorse. His dogs all look good. He's all dressed in yellow. Dogs are still galloping. Hans got third last year. It's more of a husky looking team compared to all these other houndier teams before him, but Hans has got very versatile dogs and does a real good job. And he's in across the line. Okay, you're just listening to Eddie Streeper and Mike up there in the booth on 4th and D. We have to wait for our next teams. We want to thank our sponsors, of course. We've got a few, a few dogs, or a few mushers we're waiting on down here. down there friends we're looking for mandy mitchell although it's written michael and hugh know as well right and for all things rondy make sure you go to herrondy.net for a full schedule of events and so many things happening all right let's go to eric price for a final check at tudor road go ahead eric that was it that team have come through? Yeah, clearly, quite a ways behind. Did not have the cool hat on. So I suspect maybe ran into some trouble. Did have a full team of dogs. Just looked like there was one in the bag. So not sure what happened there, but he is through the checkpoint. Yeah. All right, great job, Eric. We'll catch you out there at Tudor Road tomorrow. Okay, we're just waiting on our rookies now, friends. Mandy Johnson, Mitchell Jacobson, and Hugh Neff here. 
Everybody else is up the hill. Three more mushers. These are official times coming in from fourth. All right, and here comes another team down the avenue, Eddie. Yep, they just crossed third. See a team coming in there, number five, which would be Dave Turner. And Dave's a distance, uh, got a distance team, so we're not surprised. He's a little slower than his sprinters, but his dogs all look good. They're mostly all galloping, a couple trotting. And Dave's back in across. Nice guy, easygoing guy, friendly guy. And he'll be happy to be back. I agree with that commentary, Eddie. Yeah, so we've still got a couple of teams. Dave's a good man. Left to go. But we've seen lots of things happen uh, along the street and out along the trails. So we just ask people to keep their dogs home and keep their kids tied up. And uh, and just uh, watch the dogs go by and not interfere with them in any way possible. So commentary there from... Mm -hmm. And as far as we were telling us earlier, the dogs don't really want to watch the dogs go by. They don't really. Whether you think they do or not, that's not the case. decide to do but i know that's the goal for that kennel to tie this record this year if they can and then we'll we'll see what their goal is after that but uh, i think that's the plan hey mike and terry is still here on cordova just wanted to give you a little heads up man dave turner team was really good coming up this hill i know he dropped about 10 positions and he's got a lot of friends in alaska and beyond but his team was real good yeah, he looks real good. Uh, Dave looks steady coming in across the line. All dogs are still pulling and galloping, so he's happy to be back. Okay, and the things that you can see when you're out here. Okay, 590 AM is what we got in the boombox here. That's how you do the round. Janet Clark. Two teams coming, friends. Oh, we have more dogs on Cordova Hill, I believe. Go ahead, Deanna. A little further out. Um, Here we go. We're going to zoom in and let's watch these guys come all the way up. All right. This looks like rookie Mitchell Jacobson from Took. Took the Oak Took running, running hard. That's a great sign. Look at that effort. Beautiful effort. We're getting closer to rounding this thing out. We've still got a few NASCAR distance racers that are still out there. So it's going to be a little while since we get in here. So we've got uh, Mandy Johnson, Mitchell Jacobson, and Drew Ness still to come in. And I think Phil has got some nice coverage out there going on on Facebook Live and Hornet Field. 
Okay, we got Mitch. We got Mitchell coming up. Mitchell's coming up right now. His team's looking real good. He's running at the base there. That's a good sign. And then right behind him, another team. All right, very good. All right, Mandy Johnson, her first court over hill. Congratulations, Mandy. Yeah, Mandy. That's a great, great effort for Mandy. Nice job, Mandy. Congratulations. Rookie year. Getting up and over Cordova. I had her in 13. Great job, Mandy. All right. We are now just waiting on Hugh Neff, friends. Our red lantern for the day is going to be Hugh Neff. Okay, we're just waiting on our last team for the Cordova, friends. Us, you know, last team coming up. Tables, right? yeah. Yeah. That's what it's like, actually. So tell us about the course this year. It's going to be Hugh Neff is who well, we're waiting on. I don't think anybody who's living in Anchorage hasn't already noticed that we've had what seems to be unrelenting snow. And it's that kind of snow, which, I mean, who doesn't love this soft Janet's on the radio talking about the winter we had here. Every day, and for people who are working on a trail, 25 okay. miles of a trail, that is hard. Okay, so there's the end of the order here, and we just had Mitchell and Mandy come up. Mitchell, uh, which is written Michael there, but it's Mitchell J uh, Jacobson. And now we're just waiting on Hugh Neff. This was today's start order. But up the hill, we had Buddy Blaine Streeper first, then Andy. And it does mean that. That was exciting. Okay, back to it. Waiting on UNEF here. From one place on the trail where you can see maybe four teams all together. It's very exciting. Um, but it's also our softest part of the trail. Bit of a tweener here. Maybe we'll, yeah. we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and cut it out here, and then we'll come back for Hugh. So just stay, stay tuned here, friends. We'll go ahead and we don't know how far back he is, so we'll fire the feed right back up here in a few minutes, and then we'll head back and try to catch some post-race interviews tomorrow. Interviews will start at 11 a.m. on Fourth Ave, right here on Ferrandi Facebook page. Thanks for joining us, friends.